Well, hey, everybody, it's Pastor Martin, and it is Monday. How y'all doing? Good to see all of you. Um, I'm going to get right in. Hey, Mother Washington, uh, Brother King, how you doing? Um, let me plunge right into this. I, I'm not going to be long tonight. I been, haven't been on. I don't think I came on last Monday, so I'm here. So let me ask a question. Uh, question on, on the table tonight is, why should I wear a mask? Um uh, I've seen those that are demonstrating and uh, they're demonstrating saying that uh, someone said that they feel that it is against the Constitution. Hey, Sister Jackson, it's against the Constitution to wear uh, a mask and it's against our constitutional rights and we should not be wearing a mask. So tonight I want to ask and get your input on uh, about wearing the mask. Now, uh, it is somewhat of a thing with the mask. The mask can be very uncomfortable. They can be um, not only uncomfortable, but uh, hard to understand when you're talking or speaking or ordering or whatever. And uh, seen a choir the other day at a home going where everyone was wearing the mask except the person that was singing. Uh, I've seen a couple people that were speaking and they were wearing masks and you could sort of hear what they were saying or whatever. But uh, now the, the White House is saying that all everybody should wear a mask and then the president comes back and says well uh you don't have to wear it it's it's a personal preference or whatever with wearing the mask so tonight what are your thoughts about why should i wear the mask why why should we wear masks um you know they're saying that the mask saves lives or whatever let's talk about that because uh when i go out and i've been out uh, quite a bit uh, when I went out go out to do things uh, that are necessary to be done and I'm looking and I'm seeing that there may be a breakdown in the mass situation and it may go between uh, generations or ages or whatever because of course the news media at first put out that everyone that from 60 or either 65 and on up would be people that would be most vulnerable for this coronavirus. Then we find out that we've got a lot of young people and cases are going up in California. They're going up in uh, Texas. Uh, they're going up in Florida where uh, the governor of Florida that was pretty much adamant about you know opening and doing things, now he's closed down the beaches for the 4th of July this coming weekend. And then, of course, in... Uh, Texas, things are going up. I've read cases where people went out to celebrate uh, a birthday party at a house and 19 members of that particular house uh, uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. One group says don't go. The other group, they went on and then they tested positive for the virus. Uh, another, uh, Some other people went out for a uh, thing at a bar and every one of them tested positive for the virus. And so we see all these things happening and it seems to be a breakdown in the mask situation. Most of the people that asking the question, why should I wear a mask? It seems to be an age breakdown. Well, when I go to the store, I see usually 
the older people uh, that um, uh, that wears masks. The older ones are wearing masks, and then there are those that don't wear a mask uh, at all. And you're saying, okay, well, what what is the thing? And people are walking around as though the pandemic is over because the state and the governors. Uh, adamant about the economy and they're opening up everything and even our governor here in Georgia he was adamant he said he's he's looking at the numbers he's uh, listening at uh, the lady I uh, forgot her name um, and said you know uh, Dr. Toomey I believe said oh the numbers are great and we're doing this so he opened things back up but today he signed an executive order saying that uh, uh, we should practice social distancing and there should be no gatherings of more than 50 people unless you could prove that you could be six feet apart. Well, that's what they were telling them at the first time. But the economy seems to be more important to the, the governors and leaders of these particular places. And so they're doing it. Even in, in some of our church settings, uh, it seems to be those that may be going uh, to do do things, it seems to be that they are sort of uh, doing the same thing where it may be driven by economy. I'm not saying that it is, so don't nobody get offended. I'm just saying it just feels that way, that it may be driven by the economy. Hey, cuz, how you doing? So what is your take on it? I, I mean, what what's the, the take? Hey, uh, what, what is what is the what is the the take on this? What do you think about it? I mean, I know that you know these things, and we probably should be wearing masks and stuff. And I'm I've got uh, listen, I I got a uh, mask all around. I got a mask here, mask there, mask. I got masks all over the place. I've got about seven, eight different masks, and I'm wearing my mask every time I go out. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you how much the mask is that important. I went out. Now, you know, usually you don't turn around for stuff, but I went, I got in the car yesterday to go take care of something. And as I was going, as I crank, when I was cranking my car up and pulling out my driveway, I noticed that I didn't have my mask. So I immediately pulled back into the driveway and, and came back in. And my wife said to me, she said, well, what, you, you, did you forget some? I said, yeah, I forgot my mask. Now, you know, I know people turn around for cell phones. They'll turn around for other stuff. But I, I I turn around strictly to get my mask because I didn't want to, you know, uh, you know, be in without a mask. Not so much that I – it's not if having thing to do with fear. Abraham Simpson, not having thing to do with fear. It is the fact that uh, others don't seem to take it as serious as I may be taking it. So I went to get my mask because I don't want to be catching anything, walking through anything. So I went to get my mask. And so there are a lot of people just say, well, I don't know. I don't, I, the mask is this and it's invading this. Listen, if it's a health issue, if it's a health thing, I think we need to wear masks. Uh, uh, and, and, and you're right. Cause at the end of the day, nobody's going to take care of you, but you. And you got to know that you can't depend on people to cover you in your safety. So why should we wear a mask? Number one, we should wear a mask because it is said that the mask keeps uh, me from spreading to others as well as them spreading to me. And people uh, don't seem to understand the social distancing. I was in the store uh, yesterday and the, and the lady came right up on the back of me <laughs> and I almost, I almost turned around and said, really, are you, are you kidding? Can't you read? And, and, you know, I was real nice or whatever. And she went on about her business, but that's why I, I can't trust other people because other people are not taking this serious. I mean, people are out having fun. And, and the thing that I'm looking forward to happening or, or that I'm looking for, and I said to someone today, I believe that this weekend, which is the 4th of July, and you know how we love to celebrate 4th of July, family time, reunions and, and ribs and, and, and baked beans and all that stuff. I'm here to tell you, let me tell you, that somebody, I believe it with all my heart, somebody this weekend 
is going to be partying like it's 1999. Do y'all hear me? And they're not going to wear no masks. They're going to be out breathing on each other. They're going to be out doing all this stuff. And so they don't feel they need to wear a mask. I mean, they're going to be just having fun. And so they're saying there's going to be another surge in August. And, and I believe it's going to be after the 4th of July. We saw what happened with Memorial Day. Now we see this great surge where 2,000 people uh, in a day and all this is being affected. So here we go. And this weekend, watch what I tell you. People are going to be walking around acting like the, the pandemic is over. Now, let me talk to those of you that that's in church because you know, a lot of times I, I recognize that some people in church, they get deep and I know y'all want to be deep and say, well, you know, I ain't worrying about it. I ain't going to get sick. I'm not going to get sick. Let me tell you something. It's not about fear. It's about being cautious. It's about being safe. It's about watching out for yourself. Even though others may not be watching out for you, you got to watch out for yourself. So I'm saying to you that it is important for us to wear the mask. Some of us need to get more than one mask. You need to get um, <laughs> go and, and and just get as many as you can and keep them on hand and make sure when you go out. Uh, I never thought I would be wearing a mask like that, but let me tell you something. Somebody better put a mask on. And why we should wear the mask. I, somebody said, well, the president ain't wearing no mask. I can't help what the president don't do. I can't help with what the people up there and some of his people in the in some of the staff in the White House, too, I believe I was reading online, have tested positive for the coronavirus. And so somebody is catching that thing. Somebody is hitting them up there. And and we got to understand that we I'm not in the White House. I'm not responsible for what's going on in the White House. I'm responsible for what's going on with me. And there is a gap, I'm telling you, there is a gap uh, that, that's moving. That age span, 20, 30, 40, uh, and then I'm looking at the lines and, and finding out that there are folk that are dying that are younger than me. And folk that, that were born in 70 and 73 and 75, and, and you're trying to figure out, well, what's going on with that? Because they're around here with no mask. And everyone's feeling, well, it ain't going to bother me. And hey, I'm a Listen, the coronavirus has proven that it, had, it has no respect to person. It don't respect whether you church or not church. It don't respect whether you had the Holy Ghost or no Holy Ghost. It respects none of that. All he respects and all that thing is is after whoever it gets. And so when you start talking about you know, I don't, uh-uh, you better wear the mask. I'm telling you, put the mask on. Get that mask, put it on, and tell yourself, I'm, I'm wearing my mask. Uh, I'm, I'm, let me see, can I get to my mask here? Y'all give me one, one second. Let me get my mask. I'm going to show you. Just hold one, one minute. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let, let, me, let me show you so you will understand. <laughs> hey, Sister Sanders, let, let, me, let me show you. My, my daughter bought this mask, and I got a couple more around here. I, I can't get them all out, but uh, this is not the one I want today, but this is one I wear most of the time when I go out. Very comfortable. Let me get it on here right. And I put it on, and you see it covers is covering everything so you see i got the mask on i put my glasses on and aces glass okay see that right there uh get that down a little bit but i'm covered i got a little crooked let me see that go but see i'm covered so anything coming in going out i'm covered now sometimes it it it's it, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, a <laughs> sometimes it seemed to be, you know, I can't be like, oh, Lord, I, and they'd be like, what'd you say? 
uh, but I'd rather for them not to hear me wearing the mask than not to hear me at all. Now, let me let me explain. I'm going to take this off because y'all need to understand what I'm saying. I'd rather for them to hear me, not hear me, and understand me wearing the mask than for them not to hear me at all. What do you mean? I'd rather for them to say, well, we can't hear you. And because if I don't wear this and I get something and I'm stuck somewhere in the hospital and I'm dead, guess what? You won't hear me at all. And I, I, I said to someone, I really plan on trying to make it to 60. <laughs> and, and I hear you, uh, Jones, it's, it's, it's hard to breathe with it on. And it is. Sometimes it gets... You know, when I'm in the car by myself, I take it off or whatever. But as soon as I step out of the car, it's on. I don't, I, don't, I don't care. I'm not taking those kind of chances. And I'm not leaving the house without it. It's like the American Express. Do not leave home without it. If you go into church, wear a mask. You know, and, and even if, you, if y'all back in church and they saying high five your neighbor, not today. If they say reach over and grab your neighbor, not today. You know, if they said no, can't ain't none of that going on, not today. No. Can't do it, will not do it. Um, because here's here's the issue that a lot of people don't understand that many people don't know that they have symptoms. And so they are sort of adding symptoms. But then there's some people that don't have any symptoms at all. And because they don't have any symptoms, what happens is there are no symptoms there. There's nothing going on there. And so you don't know if they got it and you don't have a mask on. You don't have anything on. You just sort of like going with the flow. And so a lot of people, we sort of miss the fact that we are not, uh, you know, we, we can't be going through these changes and being afraid. And like I said, I want to make sure you all understand, this is not about fear. I'm not afraid, but he gives us how to have common sense and to do things with, with common sense. What do you mean by that? Well, let me express it this way. If they told you, if they said to you, a tornado is going to hit your house at 10 a.m. It's going to come right down your street. You should get out and go to a safe location. Now, most of the times, you can choose not to go to the location and stay there. It's just like the people uh, that were in, uh, 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 in New Orleans. They chose to stay. And because they chose to stay there, something happened. And so some of them got caught with when the levees broke, they were up on the roofs and had to be rescued. So if they told you a tornado was coming down your street and you could get out and then come back and, and see if it hit your house, you would rather do that. If they told me a tornado was going to hit RRC, which is my church, at, at, at 10 a.m. Sunday morning, I could do one or two things. I could say, Lord, I'm going to pray that you turn the tornado away, and he's able to do it. But what if he didn't turn it away? What if it did hit? Would I require my members and the people that I, I serve to come to church and be sitting up in there, and we in there praying that it don't hit? Or should we be somewhere safe and then go and see if it didn't hit later? Is that means we didn't have, does that mean we didn't have any faith? Not at all. No. That means we had some sense in what we were doing. So it's not about fear when you're wearing the mask. It's about I'm looking out for not only others, but I'm also looking out for myself. I'm looking out for myself and others, and I'm looking out for family because if you if you got grandparents, if you got uh, cousins, if you got people that may be uh, vulnerable for this thing. You don't want to take it back to them, even though it may not affect you. It may affect them. So you don't want to do that. So what do you do? You, you try your best to practice safety 
in doing this. This is what you try your best to do. And so I'm saying to those of us uh, that are here, uh, when we start asking the question, I, I find it very disturbing. And I have to say this, uh, and this we're talking about tonight, and this is just my opinion, but I find it very disturbing, I must say, for people to be demonstrating over something as crazy as whether they should wear a mask or not with all the numbers we've seen of people that have died. I, I mean, I, I, I find that, I mean, to be disturbing to me. That's, that's because what it says to me is people sometimes just have things they want to demonstrate about. There's no purpose for it. Just, I don't want my rights violated. Where if you're dead, you ain't going to have no rights. If you're somewhere laid up in the hospital where family can't come visit you and you're on a ventilator and stuff, your rights ain't going to be, you ain't going to care about no rights. And so, you know, some people just like to get into stuff and, and everything is an issue with them. And wearing a mask at this point, uh, whether you're young or old, shouldn't really be a fight for us. I'm not here to disagree with you. You can do what you want to do. I'm just saying what I'm going to do. Should, why should I wear a mask? I'm going to wear a mask because it's safe. I'm going to wear a mask because I feel safe with it. And I'm going to wear the mask uh, to do things. You're right. People get out of bed just to be contrary to anything that that's so true just just find something to fight find something to you know find something to just i'm gonna get up and find a cause to fight for today and and <laughs> what 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 are you fighting for uh, it's a mask you know think about it and it's not the first time we've had to wear masks if you go uh if you go to uh uh, 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 if you go to uh, the hospital and you go to room, sometimes when people uh, are susceptible to certain things that you may bring in, they'll have you to put on a mask. I remember my uncle was in the hospital. We not only had to put on a mask, we had to put on the whole suit. I mean, the whole, the whole thing, or cover our shoes and everything uh, when, when we were going there, had to wear a mask. When my daughter had my grandson, and uh, they had to do a C-section. I, I was covered from head to toe. When I tell you covered from head to toe with the mask and everything in that room, they wouldn't let me in there without that. And, and so it's not the first time. They've been doing it all the time, but now it's just hitting on the public scale because they're saying that this coronavirus is airborne. So think about it. It's almost like... Uh, you know, walking through, uh, you know, and, and doing stuff. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Uh, uh, I know it's like I don't like seatbelts, but it it has proven that they help. So I click them. You're right. I I mean I don't. I you're right. I don't like seatbelts, but I put the seatbelt on every time I get in. Uh, and then they had certain cars when you didn't have to put it on when you crank the car, the seatbelt came on you on its own. So it, it's it's practicing safety has nothing to do with half of the stuff that we're around here uh, fighting. And and Pastor Johnson, when you, when you have a C-section for a baby, you wear a mask. That's true. I mean, it it is what you do. And so some of the stuff we're fighting about and having issues about makes no sense. When I saw these people protesting that it's violating their constitutional rights, I'm I'm. I'm sitting there going, really? And then when I'm 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 looking at people walking out with no mask on, like it's not gonna bother me. I'm like, really? I'm 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 just floored. I have to admit, I'm I'm amazed at what I'm seeing. And so I, I think that we're gonna have to do better, y'all. And uh Let's encourage everyone we know that we have influence with to wear a mask. Put a mask on. Get a mask. 
and and practice safe distancing. I know it's hard. I want to be back in church like anybody else. God knows I do. But when I went to church the other day, uh, and 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 I went to church and I was like, you know, I looked around. I said, Lord. And I say, I share with my members every Monday we have a prayer, and I share with them every Monday what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, whether we're going back in or, or when we're going back in and when I think we're going back in. And one of the main things that I say to them is I believe God can protect us. I know he will. But one of the main things I want them to understand is as a pastor, I, I feel more for your safety than I do to have you in there just to say, that we're in there. Now I'm going to say something and I'm going to get out here because this is about to get me in trouble. So I got to stop. Uh, someone asked me the other day, they said, um, uh, and, and, and Simpson, you, you're right. You, you survived uh, the uh, COVID and you were there in ICU. Um, one of the things that, that really is going to get me in trouble. So let me say this and get off of here because this going to this gonna really get me in trouble. I said to someone, even with our churches, some of them going back, and I'm not fighting them going back at all, not at all. But someone asked me a question, what is it that some of us as pastors don't get about going back and not being able to practice the social distancing and stuff like we should? Because sometimes as pastors, we have to understand we should not take advantage of those that love us as leaders. What do you mean by that, Pastor Martin? We shouldn't take people back in to uh, situations that we know they will follow us in because they trust us and they don't want to disappoint us. So what they'll do is they'll say, well, you know, we, we're going to go back in. Pastor said we're going back in Sunday. Pastor said we're going back in next Sunday. So we'll go back in. And we'll put the things or whatever, but we know somewhere in that service we're going to be touching and bumping in each other. And so we have to be able to practice safe distancing and say to our members, I don't want to get y'all sick because we don't know who's got it. I don't, even though we're taking a temperature at the door, we still don't know who in here could have this. And people somewhere are going to take those masks off. They're going to drop them or whatever. And when people trust us like that, we have to be careful that we as leaders just don't want to plunge them in because, and this is where I'm going to get in trouble at, this was the question was asked me, why is that? And, and my response was this, and you probably won't hear too many pastors tell you this, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of flack, but I'm a grown man so I can take it. We as pastors and some preachers and whatever you want to call it, we love like an entertainer. An entertainer loves the stage and loves the feel of a live performance. They love the energy of the audience. They love the energy of the music. And so a comedian or anybody would prefer to do a live with the audience and people in there so they can now, here's where I'm going to get in trouble, and, and it's not a negative way. I'm just, for lack of a better thing to use, so they can perform. Because that energy, uh, talk back to me, say something to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, I'm on pastor, preach it, say a word. We, we like that. And so, you know, standing in, standing in front of a camera with no one to say talk back to me to, standing in front of the camera or sitting at your desk reading the Bible and, and saying, um, you know, um, and, and reading that, uh, hey, hey, what's the, you know I'm telling the truth, and sitting in front of the camera, uh, uh, that's, that's running some people crazy because they, they used to, uh, you know, put me in E flat, put me in F sharp. That's what they used to, and that's what we – I mean, and I'm talking about me and everybody else. We used to that. And that has been taken away. So sometimes we take and put people's life in jeopardy because we want the satisfaction of having a live audience and doing the live thing. 
Well, I, I said it, and I ain't going to take none of it back because it is the truth. We, we like that. And if, if God knows that we really had to be out, if, if, if they shut us down and say you got to be out for a whole, the rest of the year, you can't go back until January 1st. <laughs> Some of us, I'm going to say us so y'all won't feel offended. Some people are not going to be able to take it if they got to stay out there long. Because this right here is not working. This right here ain't working for some people. This, this right here is a bit much. This is too much to handle. And standing looking at a camera and ain't nobody saying nothing back to you is a problem. Reading comments is not like people saying something back to you in a live, in a, not performance, I'm sorry, <laughs> in a live setting. And it's a bother. We might as well admit that. And so we, we will rather put people in, in jeopardy than to just admit that we may not be ready to go back yet. Because we know we got, we're going to have a habit. We know we're going to, we know it, we, it's going to happen. Going to be bumping in each other. Somebody not going to be wearing no mask. Somebody, and somebody going to, because they love us, they're going to come and may have all the symptoms or may not have none, but they're coming. Because pastor said, we're going back in. And next thing you know, we got a whole group that's sick. And guess what? If folk pass and all that stuff, none of that was worth bringing them back that early. Amen. Hey, Sister Lynn, I'm not a pastor, but it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, this is different. I mean, you have to admit it's different. You know, um, you have to, you know, this is a whole different thing. We've never been on, on this before. This is this. Well, some people have been on it when they had to do, you know, when they had storms and, and they get burned out of churches and stuff, uh, and different things. But this right here is sort of different. But now let me say this, and I, I, I don't want to get off the mask thing too much, but let me say this, and I want to say this to every pastor that's watching me. Uh, I want to say this to every pastor that's watching me that's doing live stream, and you sitting at that desk with that Bible in your hand, or you sitting at that desk with your iPad, or you doing whatever, let me say this to you. I, I want to say this to you. I want to encourage you tonight before I get out of here. I've been on here too long, but let me encourage you tonight. The one thing that you can say about this whole, dip, this whole new thing is this. Many of us are preaching to more people and ministering to more people. Are y'all listening at me? We are preaching and ministering to more people on these platforms than has most of the time ever dotted our door. We're preaching to more people on one, one Sunday or, or one Bible study than we are to people sometimes that have been to our church in a whole year. Think about that. Think about it. I mean, think about it. I, I mean, you know, we preach about it and all things work together for the good. Well, this is working together for the good. This is working together for the good. You're getting to preach to more people than you ever spoke to before. When I got through Sunday morning, I played a, a service with from Sunday morning for our live. I've been playing our services. And uh, as soon as I got through, I looked at the numbers and, and it said 500. I had 571 views and I just went off. That's more people than my church will even see. 571 views. Last time I checked it, it was over 900. Day is Monday, so it was over 900 and some views that had taken place but, uh, from Sunday to now. So that's more people than I've had uh, in, in, in one setting. I can't even get, I, my church may seat 125. It may, it, so 900 folk couldn't, couldn't be in the service. Then I got an email and, and somebody, one of my email members testified tonight, they've been going through some of their uh, 
found her her um, uncle and aunt in the apartment. The uncle died. The aunt uh, is in the hospital recovering, and and they've been feeling overwhelmed, and they were just at the point of giving up. But Sunday morning, the message that I played Sunday morning gave them life, and they got back up, and and they uh, uh up and and she said, "Now I'm back." And she said, I just want to thank you for that message. I got another text from uh, a member saying, Pastor, you picked the right message. That message, I still feel the presence of God after that message. So what are you saying? I'm telling you, let's not get so discouraged about it. It's really open an avenue and a door. So put your mask on so we can keep doing this. And if we got to go the rest of the year, Guess what? I talked to pastors that they said their even their uh, finances have went up since this thing is going on. They they've increased their finances, so nothing is going. Uh, I my person that takes care of my uh, business administrator, uh, and I know this for a fact. Uh, it, we we haven't lost any uh, revenue during this time. Matter of fact, we we've, we've increased in savings and everything. Uh, and nothing has been lost or missed. And so be encouraged. Don't let nobody, I keep telling y'all, and I'm going I'm to say it again, I'm going to get out of here. We are all on the same playing field, same level now. No one's, no one's bigger than the other person. Wear your mask. If you're going to church, wear your mask. Pastors, I know we got to have it touch. Don't let them touch nobody. Matter of fact, I, we were on a Zoom with some real doctors that's in the midst of this COVID thing, and they were saying uh, even when you pray for folk, you need to pray for them social distance, and you need to pray for them with gloves. Now we're going to let that scripture come to pass, and he sent his word and healed them. <laughs> we don't always have to lay hands on you. We're going to sit in the word. We're going to speak the word. You're going to be healed right where you're standing. I've seen people doing services in cars. I was watching uh, evangelist uh, Maria Gardner Langston. She was having service in California. They were in the car, and she was ministering in the parking lot, and and people were in the car. Uh, another friend of mine, he's having a, a, a camp meeting under a tent in uh, New Mexico, Gallup, I believe it is, and they're under a tent, but cars are parked out uh, there, and he's he's ministering there, and when they get excited, they go to blowing the horn. So, listen, it's different. It's something we've never done before. It's something we've never seen before. So what we're going to do is we're going to wear the mask and we're going to say to ourselves, we're going to enjoy this. Again, I say to you, uh, let me just let me just say this. And I'm trying to get out of here with this, but let me say this. We were sort of ahead of the curve on this because for the last five years, I've been doing streaming. I used to do TV here in the city. And so I actually do editing. I'm, when you see me doing stuff, I'm an editor. So I edit stuff. I do all my own editing and stuff, edit movies and every, all kind of stuff. Then I got Brother Jerry Smith, uh, goes out to church. He does it. My son does it. So we, we're in the video editing. We do all that type of stuff. So there's no issue with us. So I came off TV. And I remember when I came off TV, the lady said to me, uh, she said, you actually going to come off TV because I was on Saturday nights. I had primetime spot at, I think it was 11 or 11.30, and it was primetime. A lot of people were watching. I had to build a great audience, and I came off TV, and she said, you coming off TV? I said, yes. She said, why? I said, because I'm going, I'm going to go totally on, uh, uh, I'm going social media totally. And she said, really? I said, yes. Yeah. So what I started out is we tape our services. We've been taping our services uh, that's why I got all the video footage. I, I can, if I'm out the rest of the year, I got enough to play the rest of the year. Cause I got video footage. We tape every service, every Sunday we tape every Sunday we tape. And so I've got tapes all the way back to 1997, 2000, 2001. So we tape every Sunday. So in the midst of us taping every Sunday, what we do is I would come back and I would edit uh, the the broadcast for like I was doing it for TV and I would upload it either the YouTube if you check out my YouTube channel you'll find I got stuff all the way back to 1997 or 96 or 99 or whatever and so uh, 
I've got like 13,000 subscribers on YouTube and, and I don't know how many on Facebook anyway. And so what happened was I had all this information and all these things. So I would upload it. So then when I got into live streaming about four or five years ago, we started doing live stream from our church every Sunday. And so I had TV lights and everything put in. So we are, we are prepared to do everything we needed to do. So we're doing live streams and we, then we got through doing live streams. So now what I'm doing, I'm set up here in my office, live stream. I can go live at any time. I've got all kind of ways to go live. I got at least five or six things I can use to go live any way I want to go live. So we were sort of ahead of the curve on this, even when it came to electronic things. My Tuesday night Bible studies were already online. You didn't see it, but it was at, it was piped to my website, to our church website, and it was only to the members. They can, Only the members could see it. No one else could see it. Then I opened it up to everybody, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope, all of that. But what I'm saying to you is take advantage of this. You know, like I said, I've, I've opened up e-membership <laughs> and, and in the pandemic, while everyone else is talking, I've had people that have joined, actually joined my church through e-membership. I mean, actually join. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, <laughs> you know, they don't live here. They live in, in, in different parts of the country, but they've joined. And so you're preaching to more people than you ever preached to teaching to more people than you ever talked to. I'm talking to more, I'm talking to y'all tonight and I'm seeing all these things going up. I'm talking to y'all, y'all listening. Somebody else is going to watch later. So I want to say to those of you to get back to my original subject. <laughs> I just felt I needed to help somebody with that because I know sometimes pastors, it can get discouraged and I don't want you to get discouraged Keep, keep pressing. Believe you me, it's going to work out. If you're preaching to more people on Sunday mornings on this thing than you've been preaching to at church, you keep pressing. I mean, keep doing that thing. Keep pushing it. Keep pressing it. Whatever you feel you need to do, do it. And, and then go back to my original subject, and I'm through. Wear your mask. Don't let nobody fool you. We need to wear these masks. Put it on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Stick it on. I'd rather be, let me see, can I get this straight? Uh, there we go. I'd rather be safe with it on than dead with it off. Okay? Let me say that one more time. I'd rather be safe with it on than dead with it off. Makes sense. We need to do it. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, those that are listening on, on, on my podcast, thank you so much for being a part. I, I pray and trust that you all will be safe. I, I pray and trust that you all will, uh, by all means, uh, stay safe out there, y'all. No one's going to look out for you but you. No one's going to take care of you but you. Take care of yourself. Practice social distancing. If you, ain't, if you don't have to go, and please, and we, we, I'm going to pray before we leave tonight, but please, by all means, by all means, I know it's the 4th of July. I know you're tempted. You are very tempted to do and to go. Don't do it. I, I know you're tempted. I, I know you are tempted. <laughs> That's right. I'd rather be six feet apart than six feet under. Amen. <laughs> and that will be a amen. <laughs> amen. That's, that is the truth. And, and I, I know we're being a little comical, but I've lost some friends to this thing, y'all. I've lost some family members to it. I've lost some people that I thought would be here. And I'm, I'm like, wow. I've lost some people really close to me from this. 
And so I say to you, let's practice and let's put on a mask. Let's pray. I think it's important. Let's pray. There may be some people that's watching tonight. You got some family members dealing with it. And you, some of you've got to be sensual workers. You got to go in and stuff. I'm going to pray that God covers us because we know that he can and he will. And we know if we do what's right in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, when the deaf angel came riding, God says, when I see the blood, if you put blood on the doorposts, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. He could have let them get outside and it still kept them, but he gave them instructions, stay in. And when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over. There's a reason for that. I can let you go out, but I want you to practice safety and go in. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Father, we thank you. We praise you tonight for those that are watching. And we're talking about it tonight. God, about the situation in the world, this coronavirus, this pandemic, when they're saying that we should wear a mask. I pray tonight that you would touch us. I pray that you would lay hands on us and cover us. In your blood, I pray those that have to go out, God, those that have to go to work, those that are the first responders, those that are health care workers, I pray that you would touch them and give them strength. We thank you for those that have recovered from the virus. And then we thank you, God, that you covered us up until this point. We thank you for those, God, that even have been affected, but you brought them out. God, we know some pastors that have been affected, but you've brought them out, God, and they're in the midst of recovery. I pray that you would bless them. Then I pray that you would encourage every pastor and leader, God, those that are dealing with the anxiety, those that are dealing with the stress of ministry in this pandemic, that are trying to figure their way and, and move in their way and trying to get your leading and your guiding. I pray that you would guide us and lead us, God, to do what we need to do. God, there are those that will go back into their sanctuary. I pray as they go back in that you would cover and give them the way to deal with it and how to handle it. I pray that you move and have your way. Do it now. God, I pray that you cover every uh, member of our RC and every member of every church. I pray that you lay hands on our leaders and those that are in ministry and lay hands on your people and cover. God, we thank you for doing it tonight. We give you glory and we give you praise. We understand that nobody can do it but you. And God, tonight we bless you. Tonight we praise you. Tonight we exalt your name. Now, Lord, I pray for everyone that has listened tonight, everyone that has shared, everyone that's been a part of this conversation. I pray that you bless them and not only them, but bless their homes and bless those that are close to them, those that are connected to them. I pray that you would bless them. God, and even though we may not agree with everything he does, we pray as your word declared and told us to pray for kings and those in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. We pray for the president. We pray for the vice president. We pray for those governors and those leaders of these states and cities. We pray for every pastor and those that must make decisions. God, we pray that you give them godly wisdom and uh, cause them to surround themselves with godly counsel. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy. We bind the devil for he is a liar. God, we thank you. God, that we will come out on the other side of this. And we thank you that your word uh, has not been lost in the midst of this pandemic. And we thank you that the year is not wasted because your word is still good. And I thank you now that it's going to happen. I thank you that it's happening now. I thank you for the blessing of God. Thank you for the favor of God. Thank you for the divine protection of God. And we give your name glory. We give your name honor for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Well, I pray and trust tonight that you have been blessed. I pray and trust that you have received. Thank you so much uh, on my end. And I don't know what it looks like on Facebook, but I see it on my end uh, that I've got a, all these thumbs up. Uh, a whole lot of y'all been hitting it. It's 303, 185 hearts. God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, I say to you again, put your mask on. Let's be safe. I'd rather be safe 
than sorry. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful night. Have a prosperous and a productive week. And just remember that our best days, I know, it's, I know it don't look like it, but I'm here to tell you our best days are ahead of us and not behind. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is my prayer. I'm <laughs> sorry.